Hi, this is Dan here. I hope you're doing really well today. I've got a really cool, really fun lesson for you today that's going to help you work on your ear, which is a very important aspect of being a musician. You need to wean yourself off YouTube and of tab sites and you need to get better at being able to work stuff out yourself. This is a fun one. And it's mostly John Williams tunes. John Williams, the, the film composer, he just had an amazing knack of, of using the simplest notes in the world and coming up with incredibly memorable theme tunes. I'm going to demonstrate the first two with, I'm going to go in the key of C, go here. That's the original Superman theme tune, and it's just incredibly simple. I'm going to spell out the intervals, and I'm going to go to another of his tunes and show you something. So we're at the eighth fret of the E string, that's C. That's the root. If you go two frets across, one string down towards the floor, that's a fifth. One more is an octave, so root fifth octave. The seventh fret of the G string, which is the note D, that's a ninth. And two frets higher, the E, that's a tenth. Basically nine and ten in the in the scale. So these are intervals. Very simple. The tenth is the third up the octave. That's an arpeggio when you go one, three, five and eight separately. That's fifth, third, John Williams didn't write this obviously, fifth, third root, then back up to the octave. This kind of conditions your ears as to what notes are used in, in melodies. Also, when you spell out the notes of a melody, you find the key. Uh, the originals of nearly everything in this lesson um, are not how I'm playing it, but I'm just demonstrating a point. So, that's fifth, to the root. Really strong, bold, but extremely simple. So fifth to the root, back again, and then octave fifth root. Tenth to ninth. I'll stay in this same key, close encounters of the third kind. Depending on your age, you would have seen these films or not. I certainly did, and, and I love that bit in the film. It's exactly the same notes from Superman, rearranged a bit, and it sounds different. It sounds iconic in a different way. And it's this kind of thing. I know you're not going to play this in a bass line, but when you learn melodies, you, you learn a lot about music as well, and you learn the key, and you learn to condition your ear to hear these things. So I, I definitely recommend you do this doesn't have to be the ones I'm showing you in this lesson. Any theme tune you can think of, nursery rhymes, whatever, just get learning them. And do think about it in this way. Oh, it's a fifth. Makes it very easy to memorize as well, because if you know what key you're in, and you know that that note there is a fifth, which you should do. You know, if you work out your triads and arpeggios, and spell them out as you go, that's a root, that's a major third, that's a fifth. Then you can, you know that this melody starts on the fifth. Indiana Jones next. I'll show you how that goes, but you'll also see in real, real time any mistakes I make. I'm not going to edit anything because there's C major, okay? You would probably want to listen to the original, get to the, to the melody bit, and just pause after. But look, if you just play those notes, it, it fits to a major scale, but it, the, the third, fourth, and fifth. Then it goes to the octave. So that's, um, yeah, just know the scale in terms of numbers, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and this goes three, four, five. And what you're doing when you're, when you're doing this is you're conditioning your ear to work out pitches. Pitches are just musical notes. So the next bit is a bit lower, but how much lower? And it's okay to do what I'm doing now. Just search out for the note. It's going to be in the key somewhere most of the time, not always. Once you get to that note, it ascends. I'm not going to show you how to play this. I'm just going to tell you. 
playing a C major scale, starting from fret eight, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. Know the pattern inside out, and you know that those are the notes we're going to. What does it do after that? moved up a bit there but it's still the same notes from C major let's move on to Star Wars now again this isn't in the original key but all you would do is you would find what the original is and just move the pattern around I'm gonna move this down to the third fret because that's it starts off on a fifth which is the G in this case it doesn't go like that. It doesn't go from a high G to the C. It goes from a low G to the C. And look, we're starting on that fifth again. It's just very simple notes. It absolutely amazes me that that John Williams, much of his iconic work is using the same intervals. How does it work? I don't know, it's crazy, but you know, different tempos, different instruments, different orders of notes, and you, you've got an infinite amount of possibilities here. From C major, I will tell you that it starts on the third fret of the E string, and then from there, you fill in the gaps. Pick really, really simple, memorable, strong melodies like this that aren't very fast. And that way you can, you can give your ear and your brain a chance to catch up. So don't do anything too difficult. One John Williams tune that isn't major, that's probably his most famous of all. Jaws theme just goes E to F. That's a minor second or a flat second. You can see that that doesn't conform to the notes of a um, of a major scale. Loads of rock uses that flat second because it's angry and it's minor and it's it's dissonant and it's. It's tense. So everything I did before that was a major scale because that that was what the music, I guess, required. And that's another approach to this that will help you is to to try and map out you know, moods, vibes and emotions to what scales are being used. If you want a really, really happy, this is why I love film music, because it very much is all about how you're making someone feel. And that's all music across the board. But if you wanted to write a bass line that was um, you know, really happy, you're probably not going to use that interval. But if you wanted an angry, angsty rock riff, you probably would. Not every melody and exercise like this is going to be as easy where you've just got one major scale or one natural minor scale or, you know, or just one key. Things, composers, especially film composers, change things all the time. They have like a palette, they have a toolbox of these different scales and modes that they use, as does any bass player or writer. So the more that you know, um, the better. You know, If you want to just be in a punk band, maybe you just need one scale and that's it. But if you want to expand your musicality, you want to know a bit more. I'm going to return to the Star Wars theme tune because there's a bit in it I forgot to show you, which is, so we got... There's a bit further on that it goes... You fast forward the melody and what you do is you learn that and you just, it falls under patterns it's a natural minor scale so we've gone from the key isn't c but in this case we've gone from c major to just a natural minor scale and that's a parallel minor often composers will take a key like the major key c major and just do a little melody that's in the natural minor starting on that same route it's called the parallel minor did a lesson recently and lovely day does that where it goes e major to e natural minor so by learning that song and asking yourself 
something has happened here. What is it? You learn the fact that parallel minus can be used, and that's what you do. Um, you you try not to. You try to let your ear guide you. So you hear something's wrong. Just figure out the notes. Not wrong. Different. You figure out the notes, and if you don't know why, it doesn't matter. But but if you do, you'll find that that will help you in other areas. Okay, it's not a film theme, but The Simpsons does this. <laughs> uses a Lydian mode. So if we're going from C, it's basically C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C. The same as a C major scale, except that fourth, the perfect fourth, is raised, so it's a sharp four. And it's got this... this really cool celestial mystical quality about it. And Danny Elfman, that composer, he uses that a lot, you know. Just different configurations of that scale it uses, and it, I, I love it, it sounds great. So try and learn The Simpsons from a Lydian mode. If you did that with a major scale. It's just wrong, okay. Another great Lydian moment is in Alan Silvestri's theme for Back to the Future, where it goes. So Lydian again. And it does do something a bit different there. I think it goes to a secondary dominant, although I'm not sure, and I'm certainly not going into that in this lesson. But just to say that he's another composer that loves the, the Lydian mode. And you don't often hear that when you're... Let's talk about bass lines now. You don't often hear that when you're learning pop or, or, or you know, rock stuff. But it does happen a fair amount, so it's a good thing to know, not just your natural minor and your major scale, which certainly do figure a lot, whether it's themes, melodies, or bass lines you will get the modes from the major scale and other scales. So that's why you want to sort of increase your knowledge bit by bit, start off slow. You'll find that when you get to the easy stuff and you're kind of quite conditioned to learning that, you'll find that your ear is more capable of going to the next level. Obviously, work on your technique as well so that you can play this stuff well. But perhaps find these themes on YouTube or wherever. I haven't... Um, I've just done the, little, the, the main bits of each of these tunes, and I also showed them to you in different keys. So based on the knowledge that you have and that it's very simple fifths and thirds and what have you, go back and listen to them and figure out the key that you're in and figure out the melody, and then there might be a bit after, a bit before. John Williams is a great one. You know, the E.T., Jurassic Park, those themes, exactly the same. It just stuns me that the notes are always the same. They're always the same. They're coming from a key, but melodies don't sound the same. It's just really crazy if you think about it. And then if you extrapolate that out to bass lines, it's the same. Minor pentatonic is so simple, five notes, and yet they're all so different when you listen to different riffs. So this is all about ear training, and I've done a few lessons on this recently, so make sure you go back and watch the other ones. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more things like this. I hope that this made sense. If there were any questions that you got from this, please leave a comment below and I'll get back to you on that. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.